so good morning, fire catchers uh, and, and other guests. I know that this, if this event of the fire catchers classroom, actually I advertised or I, I invited a lot more than just the fire catchers because I, I know that this is a, a unique topic. We're introducing the introduction of dr a biblical dream imp interpretation. This is one uh, subject that I have a lot of passion for. It is an outside of our departure of normal worship flags or worship or presence or that kind of thing that we normally talk about in the fire catchers classroom. But there was a lot of interest by the fire catchers that they would like to kind of know this topic. So if you are watching now, welcome. And if you will be watching a little bit later, you catch this on the replay, uh, welcome. Uh, there is, if you're on the call right now, if you look in the chat, there is actually four downloads for you. We have the handout which bl with blanks so that you can fill that in as we go. There's also the dream principles, the interpretation principles, download and a biblical numerology and biblical Bible uh, color meanings. So those links, and if you are catching this uh, either on our website or on YouTube, just look below the video. There's gonna be those links that you can catch. You can pick up those downloads and follow along. So this subject is huge. This is really going to be such a small, it, it's gonna give you a sampling of what we of what this workshop is. I teach the, uh, the, an intro to biblical dream interpretation locally, and um, this is part of a much, much longer workshop. So before we move further, let's just invite Holy Spirit because he's, it's by him that we do all of our dream interpretation. That's how, that's how we are able to know the thoughts of God. So let's just invite him in. Father, uh, Holy Spirit, Jesus, we welcome you into our morning. We welcome you into this teaching. Thank you that you, uh, you want to speak with us, um, so much that you, you're creative in how you speak with us, that even when we, you use dreams, or even when we don't want to listen in the in the natural you will bypass our natural hindrances um, to speak to us in dreams and so give us um, that this information is helpful uh, that it furthers their relationship that it matures them into greater maturity and spiritual um, depth that the relationship that they have with you is deepened um, because they are hearing your voice in a different way that they're that they're um, understanding another fantastic way with which you speak to us. So thank you for being part of this morning. Um, in Jesus Christ's name, amen. All right, so let's, I have, yeah, we're gonna blaze through this. So what I'm hoping to do at the end is we're gonna do like a, a dream mapping. Uh, we're gonna do some dream mapping. Uh, I'll show you a demonstration. We can do a demonstration. And then if there's time, we might even uh, break into groups so that we could, uh, just kind of practice some of the principles. Uh, this is very, it's, it's practical uh, information, um, but anything that I teach you is superseded by Holy Spirit. So he can, he will not ever violate scripture, but he will violate some of the things that I might say today. So uh, what I am saying is just principles and guidelines for, for dream interpretation, uh, but there is no formula. And there's many, many ways to actually, uh, teach biblical dream interpretation. Um, there's different styles. Uh, I kind of like that, you know, three plus four equals seven, but so does two plus five, one plus six. So there's just a lot of different ways that you can inter biblically, biblically interpret dreams. Uh, and so my goal is not to actually teach you how uh, to interpret your dreams, but it is to present biblical information regarding dreams and interpretation so that you are more equipped to decipher the dreams that God gives you. You know, God literally died to be in a relationship with you and he wants you to fully know him and know his glory. He gives us his spirit, spiritual gifts, dream, dreams, visions, and other spiritual encounters for, to help us know him more. So if I can, uh, there's a few of you that I can see on on the screen. Uh, who, did anyone here dreams a lot? You can actually just say that in the chat. Does anyone dream a lot? Or do you dream and don't remember your dreams? Give me a thumbs up or... There's a few that dream. 
I'm going to assume that you that if you're here, you're you're interested in it. So you probably do dream or if you're like, I don't dream and I want to, uh, we'll do a prayer of impartation that you will actually um, expand your dream language and your dream and your dream um, uh, retention. So there's a couple of things, even just return, re retention. So Marcia says that she's been dreaming a lot more lately. I know that I go in, in seasons of dreaming a lot and not dreaming a lot. Um, and really, so my story of how I actually started with this dream interpretation has been pretty short. Uh, and it would, it's been less than, less than 10 years. It's less than a decade. I was at, at a conference. Uh, I was, I, actually, I was at a teaching, a class with John Paul Jackson, and he had mentioned it was a prophetic, it was a pr prophetic training class, and this, and even the prophetic was so foreign to me. I didn't understand or know or had not experienced that God speaks uh, outside of the Bible. I thought uh, growing up in a Mennonite culture that it was the Bible and and only the Bible, it, and um, not understanding that God is still speaking. I didn't doubt that he died. I just, it didn't, it, I wasn't taught that. It wasn't kind of taught in our classes. And so I had, was in this prophetic class with John Paul Jackson, who is uh, an incredible dream interpreter. And, and he uh, teaches a lot of, of, he has a lot of information. And I find that he's just a real man of integrity or he was, he's the late, the late J, John Paul Jackson. Uh, I was, I'm really glad that I, that I taught under him, that I learned under him. And that's actually how my style is. I've been, I teach the way he teaches as well. Um, but in this course uh, of hearing God, he just, just mentioned dream interpretation. I did not, had never considered dream interpretation. And I was still trying to grapple with like, is God speaking prophetically? Does he, can, he, can I hear him? And I was just trying to listen to his teaching and, and then he throws another thing in, oh, he, he speaks in dreams. And I was really contemplating. I asked, you know, do you speak in dreams? Like, how does this work? And so it was a multi-day uh, class. And so I'd gone home, uh, went to bed. And the next morning, my husband tells me he had a dream. I think, well, that is weird that of all... <laughs> Like he, he never told, I, I, I cannot actually recall at every time that he'd ever told me a dream of his. And I'm, and I'm like, well, that's, I'm thinking to myself, that's interesting. Tell me your dream. So he told me this dream and instantly I was a believer. I was a believer in the dream. And let me tell you the dream, uh, just so you, uh, and I'll, I'll kind of explain what it, 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 it points me in a bad light. So just a FYI. <laughs> But in this dream, he had my husband, we were on a bus and we were at the back of the bus and um, I had, I was sitting with him and I had left my seat with him and I had moved up to the front of the bus and I had snuggled with another man. And uh, my husband had come up and he said, are you not going to be with me? Uh, are you not, are you not kind of like, are you coming back? And and I responded, it's okay, don't worry about it. And then, then that was the end of the dream. And so here's the thing that was happening that I had immediate conviction about um, was that uh, my husband for a long time didn't attend church or wasn't interested in faith things. Um, and I had a real heart for giving to being generous towards uh, kingdom kingdom charities and in, in kingdom uh i was i've been on fire to build the kingdom for a long time and so i was i was giving a lot of our money to to different charities and he didn't know about this and so uh, i felt uh conviction about that and i realized god was speaking now as we move through the dream interpretation i had so let me just let just let me reiterate i did not know anything about dream interpretation uh and i had all i had heard was the day before that that god speaks through dreams and instantly i had known what that dream meant when i heard it and it it prompted me to action and so i confessed to my husband and we got it all sorted out and uh i don't do that anymore um he's on board with with all of our giving um, 
that, but it really made me curious about what dream interpretation was. So I began to study, I began to read books and take classes and do whatever I could to understand uh, what dreams and how dreams work and how God speaks in dreams. And again, just like with worship flag uh, ministry and teaching about worship flags, uh, not understanding it initially, then I have to go to the source, which is the Bible and find out, well, is this even biblical? And so that's kind of where we start this morning. Um, and I know that I wanted to, as as a lover of the Lord, even before understanding prophecy, I wanted to hear what the Lord was saying. I studied the Bible. I, that, that was the only way that I knew how. And so um, as he opened up my, my understanding and my awakening, my spiritual awakening to that, he speaks in all of the, re in all of the revelatory gifts that, and we can seek to know them. We can seek to um, improve and discern and grow and mature in these gifts uh, that there is also a possibility of being able to learn and teach. If I can learn it, someone's teaching it. And if I know something, then I can also uh, expand on knowledge and help others bring them into this kind of training because we all want to hear the Lord. We're in relationship. And I know that that's why you're here. Um, so if God's speaking, then I want to know what he's saying. I know if God's speaking, you want to know what he's saying. Okay. So it's good. It's important to have a good foundation, one that's level and straight. And that's, that's the rock. So we, we go right to the word of God. And, and I always say that if, that if Jesus is the word of God, then it's impossible for him not to have anything to say. He has a lot. Now I have, my notes are a little muddled because I have tried to make this small, um, this workshop smaller so that we can cover a, a lot of the information. Um, if you haven't, if you've just down, joined us and you joined us late, there's, if you look in the class notes or the chat, there's some class notes for us to follow. Uh, so you'll have to pardon me if, if I lose a little bit, okay? So throughout history, God has spoken directly to pagan kings. So if that's your, if you're following along with your notes, that's your blank, pagan kings. Uh, he, being a believer is not a prerequisite uh, to hear the voice of God. If that were true, really, then no one would become a believer because we first must hear his voice to become a, to, to, he, we must, he gives us an invitation. We have to be able to hear that. The difference is the ability to know or recognize the source of the voice. Um, that's your next, that's your next blank. I'm going to try to, so if you're following along later, I'm going to actually try to tell you which, which the blanks are. Um, some divine revelation given in a dream is intended for later instruction. So not everything that you learn God will sometimes give you a dream, and even biblically we see this. Uh, Daniel had dreams, and that his the interpretations came a little bit later. Um, also, is for a later time for intercession, and so um, he. So it's not we. It would be lovely if we always knew what the dreams meant. Uh, now sometimes those dreams are meant for our instruction at a later time, but. It's also true that his sheep know his voice and follow him. So this means that we can actually come to him with expectation, that's a blank, that if he gives us dreams and visions, it is his intention, that's another blank, for us to know and understand what he's saying. Matthew 13, 11 says, um, then he answered to you, it has been given to know the secrets of the kingdom, but to them it has not been given, right? So we have something that, that, um, the unbelievers don't have. Let me just follow in my notes. So being the fact that we know something, it's not to lord it over them. Um, I know, you know, the most annoying, the the most annoying preface to a prophecy is the Lord told me something about you, but I can't say it right now. That's not a good system. That's not a good system of of uh, intriguing people to understand. Know that the God is speaking to them. Uh, so, so even though that we have 
uh, a biblical foundation and that we have um, that God has given us revelatory gifts is not to lord it over over unbelievers, but it is actually to help them understand their dreams. It's a great evangelistic tool. Help them understand their dreams so that that they can respond. Uh, and sometimes uh, that he God speaks with to pagan kings. Think of Pharaoh and his dreams of the seven the seven cows. Uh, giving him a, a, a uh, foreknowledge about the famine that was coming. That was that he gave it to the king. Um, so what God intended all the way from Abraham, of which we are uh, heirs to the seed of Abraham, um, that, he was that they were created a holy people that were to be set apart. His intention wasn't to have an exclusive fan cub. They're we're not supposed to be um, sequestered alone. We are supposed to um, be a blessing to all nations and to do bless God as God is or bless others as God has blessed us. So we share what God gives, what God says, and what God does. Um, the biblical principle also of doing well with what you start with. Um, then more will be added as your other um, blank there. So it applies to dream interpretation. So as you, as you increase and discern with greater focus, clarity, and precision, um, and you use that gift uh, for, for, for encouraging and edifying um, and building up of the body also as an evangelistic tool. Um, as you honor the voice of the Lord, he will actually um, keep giving you more. So more will be added. In, uh, so what's the difference between dreams and visions? Um, this is probably another whole topic. Uh, Acts 2.17 says, your young man shall see visions and your old men shall dream dreams. Uh, there is the, the, I think the most basic of the, of the interpretations is that visions are awake time and dreams are nighttime. Um, there's some other differences. Now I know that John Paul Jackson says that, I think he teaches that dreams uh, are more symbolic and therefore for the for the mature person meaning taking from this verse that the old men will see will old men and women shall dream dreams i'm not necessarily i don't i don't see that in practice or in theory um dreams and visions are both equally equally confusing um and they're both and they can also be both equally very straightforward without a lot of sim with all without a lot of symbolism but just so, so you understand that dreams and visions uh, are were kind of the same principles will apply to both to both dreams and visions that we're learning here and i've pr uh, provided you with a little bit of a the the, the greek and the hebrew words uh, that you will find for dreams and visions in the Old and New Testament. So God also speaks to, in other ways that are similar to dreams so that we can also apply some of the principles or some of, uh, or how we ha can understand from the, Bible, from the Bible, some of the principles that we can use as we move into dream interpretation of our own dreams. So lucid dreaming, it refers to the awareness of the dreamer. That's a blank, that the dream is taking place. So. I had, uh, I, do, I have never had, I, well, no, I've had one lucid dream that I can think of, um, that I know, uh, one time I was resting, I was actually falling asleep and my, my back was really, really hurting and I, it was hurting, but I also wanted to fall asleep. I was tired. And so I was having this kind of war in my head. Like, do I get up and take medication or do I just stay laying down and in pain? Hopefully I'll fall asleep and the pain will just, you know, go away. And I had um, a very, very strong awareness that there was a, a heavenly angel in my room with me. He touched my back and then I fell asleep. And so actually from that moment on, I haven't had that kind of that same back pain. So, so he healed me in that dream. And I was, but I was in that state of, 
of not being uh, fully asleep and not and not being fully awake. So there was like lucid, uh, a lucid dream. So that's what a lucid dream is. A trance, kind of the same lucid dreaming trance. Um, I, 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 as the biblical term or understanding that we understand it as like Peter was in a trance on the, on the roof. I think it was Cornelius's roof when he had this trance of the, of the, the unclean animals coming down and the Lord says, don't call dirty what I've called clean. So that he was not in a dream. He was not dreaming. It was not a vision. It was it, scripture actually calls it a trance. So we have that, uh, that's similar to a, lucid dream, and then parables. Jesus taught in parables. He taught, they're symbolic. And a lot of our dream interpretation principles and guidelines comes specifically from the teaching of Jesus um, when he was teaching uh, on explaining the parables to his disciples. So the reason why do we dream? If I'm going too fast, I just want to, if I'm going too fast or um, if you have some questions, I'll, I'm trying to keep a, an eye on the chat. Uh, I, I might pop in your question and I will have different times. We're going to have some Q&A a little bit later, um, but keep, write your questions in the chat and I'll, I'll keep my eye on it and see if I, if I know that I'm going to be answering it in the, in the learning or um, we'll have a Q&A a little bit later, okay? So we're trying, so why does, why do we, why does God speak to us in dreams? Um, we're triune bodies, right? We have body, soul, and spirit. So the soul is made up of the mind, will, and emotions. Uh, so, and God designed our bodies to need rest. But like God's spirit, our spirit doesn't need rest. So although our, you can also be weary in your soul, David often wrote about being weary in the soul, um, but our spirits are, are, they are not confined, just like God's spirit is not confined by any limitation. Um, so our spirit really can be doing something different than our mind or body is doing it. Uh, for example, um, you could be um, speaking in tongues and read a book. The Try you can do that, and and I don't I don't recommend it. But your spirit, your spirit, it's your spirit language, can be completely in a different place, and you are functioning uh, in a different realm. I think that that's the closest I can describe what a supernatural life is like when we understand that we're seated in heavenly places, also work doing our work on earth. You can't you can't actually see my hands, but they're doing this. <laughs> Um, our bodies, okay, so our bodies can be a hindrance to hearing God, you know, like when I'm hungry, when I'm in pain, I am really not thinking about what, um, God might be saying because I'm really focused on my, on my, my, what my physical needs are. Um, a few, about a month ago, I was in the hospital and I posted something and, and people were very encouraging, but one of the things that someone's, oh, that I would be, a uh, you know, make an influence or make an impact at the hospital. I'm like, I was just really kind of concerned about not dying. So I was not thinking about, am, am I a good witness here? Am I empowering them? I was just really, I was thinking about not dying. So there, there was nothing. I wasn't even a great Christian because I was not really praying for myself. So um, that, that kind of goes out the window when you have a, a pain or you have, um, when something's going on that is so heavy on our minds, hearts and minds that we're distracted. So the dreams, our spirits will, are still awake. Uh, and so when your body's at rest, do, getting what it needs, when it's getting what it needs, then God can communicate with your spirit, spirit to spirit, deep calls out to deep. That's what dreams are. Uh, and so, oh, I gotta, gotta make sure that I'm on, okay, our bodies can be a hindrance. That was the, the, that was the blank. Um, so you're not, when you have physical needs, then you are not receptive to divine revelation, or it's typically, you're typically not, you're typically not open to it. Divine revelation is the, is the blank. 
Okay, so likewise, our soul um, can distract us from divine revelation. Some people are led by emotions, and some people are led by, by more logic. Both are from the Lord, um, but um, either has a bias that can lead away from what the Lord is saying through the Spirit. Uh, what, it didn't make sense to walk around Jericho for seven days, right? If Joshua was solely led by logic, he would have had a different plan. Um, and Peter felt it wasn't right for Jesus to die to save humanity. But Jesus said to him, get behind me, Satan. So both of these were a logical or an emotional response, but neither one was from the Lord. Uh, and so our emotions and our, our minds can get in the way of divine revelation as well. But dreams bypass, that's the blank, the resistance of our body and our soul. So, and the resistance is due to several things. Uh, it's, it's really too difficult or fantastic to believe. So this really does apply to... Um, Big things that are coming, intercessors, uh, the, the things that, like Daniel was given insight and revelation about the things to come, that uh, depending on what your, what your understanding of eschatology is, that things are, that are unfolding as even now, or things are still yet to come. We're not going to get into eschatology today, but Daniel, un, he was, he received revelation for things that he had no grid for. So if God had tried to speak to him directly, he wouldn't have been able to receive it. Um, it's also different from our opinion. Uh, and so I don't know, I, God uses dreams to correct uh, me a lot. Like I shared in my first example of Gary's dream. Um, he also has corrected my thinking about someone or a situation or like Peter in the trance that he God was saying to Peter um uh the Gentiles he was he was the trance related to the Gentiles being included that they are not unclean that they're part of the family of God and that would not have been something that Peter could have received with um, words or not with like just a, an argument of words. So that became, that kind of came down to divine revelation when he was at rest and his body was at rest and his spirit could receive this. Um, also Joseph, uh, the father of Jesus, Mary's husband would have actually divorced Mary uh, had that was his plan of action. Had he not had a dream to take her as his wife. So dreams are able then to, um, to give us it, it uh, he wouldn't have received it in the natural but by the supernatural divine revelation then he could receive it because that was different from his opinion it contradicts our training no oh, sorry that's about paul's or peter's um trance um it may also seem really impossible to fulfill so you're like no that's not going to this is about promises and prophetic words that you have received sometimes they're really hard to understand or you're like no there's no way that that's going to happen and so uh the lord that's maybe one of the times that the lord actually places it that in there um for a later time of instruction and he brings as as he brings this word to pass he'll remind you of this dream and also sometimes it's not what we want to have happen right there's a blank there uh we believe what we want to believe we don't want those things so um there are there are times and i've had dreams you probably have as well uh that um i if if the lord had given me a choice i would have said no um and uh, I didn't want that to happen. And so he told me, he just showed me this is happening. <laughs> That's what happened. So let's talk about misinterpretation. Okay. In order to read the benefit of hearing God through a dream, uh, four things have to happen. Okay. You have to, did you dream? First, did you have a dream? Is there an interpretation? What's the application or the occupation of it? How, how is it, um, 
How does it take occupation in your life? And is the timing correct? And so there's a little acronym for you called RIOT, Revelation, Interpretation, Occupation, and Timing. So putting this into practice and looking at the biblical example of what this would looks like and how we can misinterpret dreams is uh, Daniel chapter two, right? This is the, in the scene, the King Nebuchadnezzar has had a dream and he will not tell his um, diviners and astrologers the dream because he is tired of them having uh, just saying what he thinks that what he's tired of them saying what he, they think he wants to hear. He just wants to have actual revelation. And so he refused to tell them the dream. And um, if they weren't able to give the interpret, tell them that what the dream was and then give them the interpretation, then he was going to execute all of the astrologers of which Daniel and his friends had been trained um, to be in this. In they had, God had given them a gift and they, the Babylonian court had under had seen the gift in him and so he was counted as um, a diviner as an astrologer as one of the psychics and so he had this fin it was a phenomenal night i'm sure it was probably uh it was quite the night probably to be praying him and his friends for the revelation of this dream so that they could tell tell nebuchadnezzar and save not only their necks but the necks of all of the the diviners and so it's i mean it's just a great it, it's a great dream and it really sets daniel up to have authority for dreams god gave daniel and his friends the revelation about the dream and the correct interpretation but even in the interpretation is correct the application or the the, the occupation or implementation that's a blank can be wrong um do you think like god really intended nebuchadnezzar to hear the first part of the dream and then immediately deduce that he should make a golden statue of it and make a decree that everyone should worship that image. So what Daniel, the, what Nebuchadnezzar's dream was, was an understanding of history, how history was going to unfold. Um, but Nebuchadnezzar uh, had pride in his heart. And so with his, his, the interpretation was correct, but he made an app, the wrong application. It was built that, that statue that put the lives of Nebuchadnezzar, um, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego at risk. Um, and then God showed up miraculously there too. But so we need God in it all. We need God to give us the dreams. We need God to give us the interpretation of the dreams. We need God to help us understand the application or where to apply this to our lives or what it's for. And then the timing, um, that we get the timing right. Otherwise, um, we don't benefit or, or the people that we're called to serve uh, or influence are not going to benefit either. Um, Hosea 4 6 says my people are destroyed because they don't know me or they lack knowledge right both believers and non-believers have dreams and they have both have methods of interpreting dreams there is there's a biblical interpretation and then there's also um, a, a soulish interpretation there's a there's a secular interpretation and you just have to go into if you look on Amazon, you'll find lots of books for dream, dream interpretation, and they are of the wrong source. So what is the difference? It's the difference is the frequency um, that we are tuned to, to accomplish the dream interpretations. There's two ways, soul versus spirit. So a psychic or a psychic versus a prophet, a psychic uh, probably a psychic probably has a real prophetic gift. They're just tuned to um, the prince of this air of the air, which is, which is uh, Satan. Uh, and he gets his knowledge from the tree of good, the, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's where that interpretation comes from. But as believers, um, being, being branches uh, of the vine of the tree of life, which is spirit. And so we have divine revelation that comes directly from the giver of life. Proverbs 9, 10, fear, the Lord, fear of the Lord is the foundation of wisdom. Knowledge of the Holy One results in good judgment. And so we want good judgment when it comes to dream interpretation or understanding anything that God is saying.
Another way to uh, abuse the interpretation, abuse dreams and the interpretation was willful disobedience. Willful, willful disobedience is the blank because of the fear of the people rebelling. Okay, so the prophets in the Old Testament, especially under um, post, post David and all the way through to um, where God kind of st stopped speaking to the people uh, because they were, the, the prophets were not, were making up their own interpretations because they were afraid of the people. They were afraid of the people that they were supposed to serve. And so they, so scripture says that they tickled the ears of the people and to, to gain favor in uh, mankind's eyes, but, but got disfavor from the Lord. Jeremiah 23, 25 um, starting there, it says, I have heard what the prophets have said who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. Behold, I am against the prophets, declares the Lord, who use their tongues and declare, declares the Lord. You don't say that. Behold, I'm against these who prophesy lying dreams and, um, and who tell my people and lead them astray for their lies and their recklessness when I did not send them or charge them. And so there's a mis misinterpretation of uh, from some of the prophets. Now, this is Old Testament. I understand that we are in the New Covenant and that we all, it says actually scriptures uh, quoted in, in Acts, that all, that he has poured his, his spirit out on all flesh. It, that's not just Christians and it's, it actually, he's giving revelation. Um, if that were not true, he, the Muslims are coming to faith, right? Because of revelations of Jesus in their dreams. Um, so, what, what I'm saying about the false prophets is that we have, we have a responsibility to, um, to investigate, understand what God is saying, um, and to test it and to, and that we're responsible, but it comes out of intimacy and relationship. You cannot get away from this. Uh, you cannot get away from intimacy or presence uh, the presence of the Lord, if you want to, if you want to know what God is saying through your dreams, it all comes through him. Oh, that's, I just got a, I just got an exclamation point on my, I, I could feel it on my body when the Holy Spirit says, you can't, you can't interpret, you can't interpret, you can't interpret dreams outside of the Holy Spirit, not for anything that is going to be life-giving. If you're doing anything less than that, you are, you are picking fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, and you are not picking the fruit of the tree of life. So a guide to developing your own, actually, we're going to, I'm going, we're going to, we're moving into something else. I'm going to ask quickly, if you have a question, I'm going to give you some moments. Do you have a question about the information that we have covered thus far? Clarification, anything else? You can unmute yourself or you can type it in. Uh, yeah, so Marsha was ask, is asking if, um, if I write them down, yeah, I do write them down. We're going to get into that uh, about how how to retain your your how to retain the dreams you have at night. Because there are times when I have woken up in the morning with uh, no recollection that I've dreamt or had a recollection that I've dreamt, couldn't remember it. Something else might come in in a time there, and there's also periods of time where. I was dreaming so much, especially when I was learning this stuff. Um, I was, the Lord, the Lord uh, was really showing me by example and showing me out of relationship how he speaks. And I, there was a period of months where I was like, I didn't know if I was awake or sleeping, if I had ha already had this in a dream because I, the revelation was so incredible and so great. I couldn't, I couldn't decipher what was spiritual and what was um, natural because it was all, it just kind of melted into one thing, but there was, and so I have like a stack of dreams that I've written that I was, that I had at that time. Okay. Okay. Um, we're going to continue on. So the guide to dr developing a dream language, uh, as you know, English is not God's first language. 
He uses many different modes of communication. So language is only one source of communication. Um, a focus on the arts is an indication uh, that God's vast array of communication, right? Like there's so much in the creative arts. Um, he has, he speaks through nature. I mean, there's some people that really, that really, really connect with God through nature. I think of King Kim Smith in one of our, one of the fire catchers. She just, she is enthralled with God in nature. Um, and he, through uh, other people um, in symbols and books in numbers. I mean, God uses it all. And so dreams actually pulls a lot of that stuff in, but definitely in the creative arts, we see that. Uh, being aware of the variety and how God speaks actually will increase intimacy in your relationship with God on every level. So there's your, your blank is increase the intimacy. No matter how much you know about the principles of dream and dream interpretation, it will never, ever ever surpass the constant need for the Holy Spirit. Uh, Genesis 40 verse 8 says, then Joseph said to them, don't interpretations belong to your to God, right? We have to always go back to the interpretation. If the Lord grants us interpretation, uh, then it is from the Lord. That it is not that we haven't been trained so great, so much to understand dreams. We still need um, dream the dream, the dream interpreter to help us understand our dreams. Because dreams are symbolic. There's a blank. In this way, parables are grouped together with dreams because parables were also symbolic. Um, and the symbols are interpreted or understood through different means. Their uh, culture is the interpret is uh, a symbol through culture. So something that is uh, for example, I had a friend, so French Canadians um, are, are called fro frogs. A frog is um, kind of like a, a near and dear affectionate term that they can call themselves. Other people don't call them frogs. They call themselves frogs, <laughs> the symbol of French Canadians. Um, but frogs in like in a dictionary, a biblical dream dictionary are are often signify or symbolize something negative or a plague, which we get out of the interpretation that Joseph gave to Pharaoh about, or sorry, not Joseph gave to Pharaoh. That was about the plagues. The 10 plagues was, was frogs. So we get that frogs, are, um, that's one of the, one of the definitions of a, of a frog in a, in a dream dictionary. However, my friend Pauline, being that she's French Canadian, uh, she was when she has dreams with frogs in it, it s signifies something completely different. And you have to understand for her that that is a positive thing. That's about that's about part of her identity. That's a part of um, her roots. And so, uh, if you were just that's why you need Holy Spirit, because if you looked at dream interpretation books and you just followed along the dictionary that some of them um, include, you would think, well, you would, you're, you would arrive at a very different interpretation. But unless you have to understand that our, our some symbols are always within context of culture that we understand. And so understanding dream interpretation language, I'm talking about this class, this micro class, is to teach you about how to inter interpret your own dreams. Um, it's another level and another er um, growth maturity to be able to understand and help other people interpret their dreams, especially within culture, because we don't necessarily understand um, how how to ask some of the questions that will help us under understand the dreamer, the other dreamer of their culture. Does that make sense? I was just, I think I said that. <laughs> I used a lot of words to, to, to make it complicated. Um, biblical precedents. So they're understood through biblical pre precedents, like I was mentioning about the frogs and the, and the plagues. Um, and then your personal history and language. I know that in a time that I had, was dreaming a lot, a lot of the roads, I there was always roads in my dream, um, which signify, I think I was in a transition, but the roads were always like, they were off, they were, back roads and off roads and they weren't paved and they weren't now some so 
without understanding what my personal history was, the Lord was actually showing me that the path that I was going was not paved, that it was a um, off the beaten path. Nobody had gone there before. I was, I was doing new territory. I was moving into new territory. Now, uh, another interpreter might come hear that and say, oh, I'm, and it would be negative that I am out of the way of the Lord. I'm not in the path that the Lord's having me on or something like that because an unpaved road in the dream interpretation books, the dictionaries, uh, often are also would signify something that's away from the Lord, but the Lord was showing me that I am off, that I'm in his, he kept showing again and again and again, almost every dream had that. So that gave me a lot of comfort in knowing like I've, it's hard. It's hard to do this road when nobody else is in it. Um, thankfully we have the Holy spirit and I, and that's how I learned pretty much almost everything I've that I'm teaching is, is through um, this learning my own path. I mean, uh, uh, dreams are transcendent. That's another blank. They have no limitations. This is the beautiful uh, aspect of dreams. Um, so they transcend the dimensions of height, depth, breadth, and time. They can be in the past um, or in the future. And they can be in the past and future at the same time. Uh, they can, you can be re relocated instantly. There's no limitations to getting to a place in a dream. You can just, all of a sudden I was, all of a sudden I was in the Bible times or all of a sudden I was, uh, you know, somewhere else. They transcend age. You can be in your own home. Uh, like you can be in your present, ho present day home, the familiar, the, the, surroundings the setting of the dream is modern day you recognize it to, you understand it to be modern day but you yourself are little or you yourself have passed on or you're dreaming about a child or a grandchild or something like that it transcends age um you can see experience what other person is experiencing with their five senses so i had a dream where my husband had uh he had a, a rotten tooth and I, in the dream, could taste the metallic taste of blood in my mouth, in my dream. All right. So there's, there's, we can, we can smell things. All of our five senses are still in play in our dreams. Um, there's a spiritual five senses and that, that you can experiences and dreams you understand i i had another dream where i could i i could see in the front of the mountain and i also could see what was behind the mountain and so the lord was showing me the in that case he was showing me what was being presented to me but he was showing me the the intention behind it so i could see both at the same time so they're transcendent there's no rules uh, no natural rules that dreams have to adhere to, which is why, um, which is what makes them maybe some challenging and difficult to understand because you have to understand how you, you start to think different. I'm going to share something with you and we're going to do a little exercise. Hang on a second. Okay. So this is about perception, understanding perception. Okay, so these images, you can all see this, the ones that I can see you, give me a, give me a sh hands up, heads up. Can you see this? Okay, so in the, I don't know how I'm going to do this. In the, I should have done a poll. I can't see chat any longer. So who sees a, uh, who sees an old woman? If you see an old woman, uh, give me a head. Uh, actually, uh, you can take, unmute yourselves. Then I can. Okay, so who sees an old woman? Linda. Linda sees an old woman? Yep. Uh, hang on a second. Who sees, who sees a young girl? Young girl. Okay. <laughs> Who sees both? Yeah. <laughs> see both now. Okay. So here, uh, the, old, the old woman, here's her nose right here, her mouth. 
and she's wearing kind of like a, a handkerchief on her on her head and the young girl is um it's a, a profile of the young girl so here is her chin yep. this is a necklace and her eyelash is right here kind of her eyelash and nose and so she's wearing a feather in her cap okay so that's that's um that one let's do another one okay who sees a what who sees a duck i see a duck yeah i do i see a duck duck okay well, well, i'll just saw a black man in the other one a black man yeah i saw a black man where that where that black was and then and he had on white garments and he was kind of bent over <laughs> Right there. <laughs> from a distance. I was looking from a distance too. Well, anyway, well, we've joined us now. I don't know. I haven't. I don't see it, but I don't see that one either. Back here. But percept. So I mean, we're talking about perception. So okay. So this one, duck. Who duck. sees a rabbit? Yes. Who sees both? I do, Linda. Oh, now I see the rabbit. I see oh, the yeah, rabbit. I see that yeah. too. Okay, so just, so um, the duck, here's the bill of the duck, the eye of the duck and the head. And the rabbit, here's the, no. the nose and the mouth of the rabbit, the eye, and then the ears are straight back. Yeah. Okay. This one's a little bit more difficult. Um, I know it's small, so I can't, there's nothing I could. Man. Um. This one, who sees, who sees an old man? Yep. Yep. Yes. Who sees lovers? Hmm. Um, let me see if I can make it. This one is probably the most difficult. Let me see if I can make it easier. Do you see, so yeah. look below. Do you see lovers now in an embrace? No. No. Okay. So r right in here, okay, I try to, hang on, let me get this. Right in here, so here's the man kissing the woman. His arm is right here. He, he's, he's over, he's <laughs> holding her and her arm is behind her. And they are this thing. Ah. Uh, let me see. An old man with only two teeth with his mouth open. This is an archway that they're under. So uh, an archway of leaves and the men and the woman are right in an embrace right here. No. Nope. Still don't see it? No. Nope. All I see is that man and he just <laughs> that's all I can see. That's all I can see is man. <laughs> I see her. This is hope. Different perception. I can't. I, this one is the. I know it is the most difficult. Can you hear? Can you hear me? On yeah, there? I can hear you. Okay, it's hope. I just just chimed in. I figured out how to use this. I see the woman and the man. You do see the woman and the man right here. The woman and the man. I are, do. I okay. Let me see if I can do one more thing. Right there. That's where. The, the man and the woman are embracing and kissing. Still can't see it. <laughs> We're just not really romantic people here. <laughs> sort of. I can sort of see the lady, but I can't get the guy. Okay. Okay, let's move on. So, so last one. For the atheist, this is an epic battle scene. It's two bloodthirsty Tyrannosaurus Rex fight to the death over a running table saw. Do you, who sees the nativity scene? Yeah, yep. me. Who sees yep. the Who sees the dinosaurs? No. Okay, here's the table saw right here. So hey. I see, I see them both. Here's the profile <gasps> of of the two Rex. It's Baronosaurus <laughs> reaching over. Yeah, so the the T Rex are fighting to the death in front of a running table saw. No. 
Yeah, do you see it? Who's, who doesn't see it still? That's you still cool. can't see it. I don't, I don't. <laughs> this one, this one I, I always post on my page at Christmas time because <laughs> it just cracks me up every time I see it. Okay, so the, the T, there's two T-Rex, one T-Rex right here, one here, and this is their mouth. Oh, okay. I see it now. See okay, now I see it. <laughs> okay, yeah. Okay, so. Yep, yep. Wait, Andre, I've got another one in there. Look at the Brontosaurus Rex reaching over the saw table. <laughs> uh huh, yeah. <laughs> Where? No, I missed the that. The Brontosaurus Rex, the one with the long neck. Yeah. Reaching over. He's getting something to eat over the two fighting. This over here? No, oh, she's she she bleeped herself. No, I'm here. Uh, do you see the brontosaurus rex reaching over? And look at the black part. That's brontosaurus rex reaching over, eating his little arms. Look. Uh. Do you see him? Ah. Oh. He's reaching. Up. Look at the black. I'm looking at. That's his neck. That's his. That's his. That's his neck. That well. That's his body there, and he's reaching over, eating something, over the Tyrannosaurus Rex. That's okay. his whole body. Okay. Yeah, I can. I lose. I lose that quickly. I can see it, and then I then I don't. Like I can see where you're getting out of that shadow. So that's. I'm gonna stop sharing. Sure. Looks like a giant bat. I'm there too. <laughs> so that's just kind of. That's just kind of like. A, a That's fun. Exercise. That's fun. All that black, the giant bat. Okay, <laughs> I'm just gonna mute you guys all for a second again as we finish this. So, um, just so that exercise is fun. It just kind of shows you that to understand what what you see is not what always is only the thing is the only thing that's there. And so understanding as you kind of move and, and, and practice your own dream interpretation for yourself and for others and for your friends, um, you will start to understand this kind of duality, duplicity of language of what the dreams of, of symbols and, and some of these guidelines. And so it just kind of trains you to think differently. If anyone has ever been in a, in a escape room, uh, has anyone ever done an escape room where you go into a room and you get clues and you're, and you're stuck in there and, and you try you have for 45 minutes and you have to get out of, out of there. It's like doing a puzzle. Um, the first time you go in, you're kind of actually just learning how the puzzle maker is making the puzzle. And then as you, um, or like even crosswords, um, if for those that do a lot of crosswords, uh, you kind of, for the makers of the crossword, if you're, if you're used to a specific maker of a crossword, you understand that that person has different nuances or they, they create their puzzles in a specific way. So if you've kind of unlocked how they create the puzzles, then you're going to able, then you're more quickly able to decipher what the puzzle is. And so this is all understanding that God speaks and so so in such variety and how he speaks and dreams and how he uses symbols um so it'll this will help you interpret your dreams if is if you look start to look at life in the duplicity or duality of what is god saying what is this saying in the natural what is god saying in the spiritual uh, because this world is a shadow of actually what's coming so almost everything one of the dreams uh books that i didn't pull down from my shelf. It's called, oh yeah, no, I did. I have some, so this book is called, is this backwards for you? No, it's not backwards. Okay. Um, if this was a dream, what would it mean? And it's by Murray Dueck. He's a, 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 a prophetic teacher local, but he, he, he's, speaks internationally. Um, this dream, like he actually takes a lot of his dream interpretation and principles out of this book, but he, he, really recommends or he tries to um, insp inspire and motivate people to think beyond just our natural. Even when we're awake, we see lots of things. God's always talking to us, might be talking to you through a, through a song on the radio or, or 
something that happened and you're like, if this were a dream, what would it mean? Um, same kind of principles. <sighs> okay. The dream, the dream, the terminology. Now I got confused with all that. It really does not take much. So, oh, we're trying to hurry up here. Okay, dream terminology. Um, you'll have a type or a figure. Uh, it's a parallel between two historic entities. Uh, the greatest, the greatest example of this is uh, yet death reigned from Adam to Moses. Even those who are sinning was not yet the transgression was not like the transgression of Adam, who was the type of the one who was to come, right? So Adam was the first man um, and Jesus, he was a shadow or a type of Jesus, representing Jesus. Um, it's a, a shadow. It con So another one is it sh contrasts what is real and what is not real. Um, Colossians 2, 16 and 17, therefore let no one pass judgment on you in questions of food or drink or with re regard to a festival or a new moon or a Sabbath. There, these are a shadow of things to come, the substance, but the substance belongs to Christ. Um, I just said in our reality is, um, is uh, our, what we ha are here, the natural is the shadow of what's actually happening. And so we respond, um, we respond sometimes without even knowing it because we're responding to something that in the spiritual realm, whether good or bad, uh, when, if we're, if we're discerning angelic or demonic, but we might, we might manifest that on earth in our reality. So that's a shadow. It's a, uh, another one, dream terminology is a sign or a validating proof. Uh, Genesis 9, 17 says, God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I've established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. So that was the rainbow. Uh, number four, you also have these in your notes, by the way. Um, it's the wonder or auspicious demonstration of power intended to cause marvel and stir the imagination. The very, the very existence of creation that, is, that God says, I have, um, I, I will show wonders in the heavens above and signs on the earth below, blood and fire, bells of smoke, symbols. So it's similar to type and metaphor. Uh, parables, we have to understand the parables. And then allegory, this is how, these are some of the things that that the ways that dreams will, things will show up in our dreams, similar to a parable, but have several points of communication of a larger concept. So allegories are used to enlighten the listener, allowing the listener to discern the truth being communicated. The allegory of when um, Nathan comes to D David, when David had taken Bathsheba and killed Uriah and Nathan had given him this, this dream, right? That's what I'm, this, the, the, the allegory. It was, he had given him the story of a poor man had nothing, had but one sheep and a king had everything. And he killed, took the poor man's sheep and, and killed it and to eat it for, at a feast that the king was having. And it was so grievous to David to hear this story that that man, the, that the king should be punished for taking the only thing that the poor man had. And then there was this really intense moment when Nathan said, you are that man. Um, that was the allegory to, to determine the whole truth. But without saying, um, that was kind of an example, a great example of how God speaks to me often. You are that man. Um, and metaphor and simile. Uh, okay. Dream interpretation. We are, is this making sense? Cause I cut out so much. I hope this is making sense. Dream interpretation. Um, Genesis 40 verse eight. This is kind of the verse that we kind of keep coming back to. Then Joseph said to them, don't interpretations belong to God. Tell me your dreams. You may not be able to interpret every dream you have, right? I want to reiterate again that there are some dreams which God gives that are intended for later, that they will make sense later. Um, and possible means of interpretation. So this is how we would interpret dreams. And we're going to get into the writing of it. Then we're going to start to move into that stuff. 
quickly. Divine revelation, divine or angelic revelation. Um, Daniel 10, starting at verse 10, God said, sent an angel to tell Daniel the interpretation of the things which he was struggling to understand. So angelic or divine revelation that you'll just know. So when I had, when I understood Gary's dream with no understanding about dreams or, or principles or anything, or even usually that when the dreamer, the dream is about someone, the, the person dreaming, not about other people. So even that, that, principle didn't apply in this dream, but I knew by divine revelation immediately that that dream, what that dream was. Um, the interpretation comes sometimes within the dream. So there had been, have been times where I have heard uh, at the end of the dream where the Lord had said, he had, uh, he had summed up the dream for me, this whole story that, that was, was unfolding. It was all this turmoil and stuff. This was several years ago. And he told me in this dream at the end of the dream that you will have, there's an onslaught of, of attacks against your family, but you have a promise. So that was, I mean, I don't know why he gave me the whole dream. He could have just said that one thing to me, but he, he let me see the whole thing. Um, and then in symbolically didn't see everything that was happening, but I go back to that dream a lot, especially in these days. Jeremiah, uh, in scripture, it's Jeremiah 1, verse 11, and then 15. God's message came to me. Do you, what do you see, Jeremiah? I said, a walking stick. That's all. And God said, good. Um, or said, good eyes. I'm sticking with you. I'll make every word I give to you come true. God's message came again. What do you see now? I said, I see a boiling point tipped toward us. Then God said, disaster will pour out on the north on every living in this land, watch for this. I'm calling all the kings out of the earth, right? So in the dream, so in the interpretation, this is a, um, a prophetic interchange between Jeremiah and the Lord, but he's giving him something that's symbolic, and then he's giving him the interpretation right away. Um, writing it down. So for 99% of, uh, of your the way that you will get better at dream interpretation will be through writing it down. Uh, First Chronicles 28, all this, David said, I have in writing as a result of the Lord's hand on me, and he enabled me to understand the details of the plan. So sometimes the act of writing it out, will you will actually gain an insight into it. It's like you're the, the kind of learning that you are, the kinet, um tactile audio or or visual so if you have seen the dream visual that you can when you write out the dream that's a tactile and um, even if you speak it out that's audio you can you'll start to decide boil down to the dream in the act of writing some of the revelation actually will come through that that in that process and then spiritual maturity all of this is is along spiritual maturity and when what I mean by spiritual maturity is that the more not the more knowledge that we have but the more intimacy that we have the more spiritually discerned we are the greater the mysteries will be revealed uh, right Hebrews 5 14 but solid food is for the mature who are by constant use have trained themselves to distinguish good from evil and finally your your interpretation Six interpretation aids. Number one, ask God for the understanding of the dream. Number one, ask God. Don't ask, don't ask me in the group. Don't ask someone else. Don't ask your friend. Ask God. <laughs> study the parables of Jesus. Number two. Number three, study dreams and interpretations already provided in scripture. Go to the source. It's his written word. Go to that source. Um, number four, most dreams have numerous applications and it requires Holy Spirit guidance and discernment. Again, going to the source, Holy Spirit will help you discern. Number five is recognize your own dreaming patterns. This will definitely help if you are able to write out your dreams. Every time you remember a dream, you write it out. Sometimes if you... If you tend to dream and you don't remember them by the time the morning comes, um, train yourself or discipline yourself to wake up just enough, have a bed, have a piece of, piece of paper and a pen by your bed, 
and write out enough that you will remember for some of it. I tried this method. When I tried, I would write just like keywords and then I would wake up and had no idea what those keywords. So not, so I'm not, I think you should do a little bit more than keywords. Um, do like maybe phrase or something and then look, and quite honestly, if you are able to wake up naturally without an alarm or jarring, it's because it's in that sweet kind of waking up that your brain is still, it's still waking up. If you can hold on to the dream and, and before you're fully awake, okay, re recall that and then write it down as quickly as you can. Um, when you have been jarred awake with an alarm or a child or for whatever reason, um, sometimes what was just, you just needed to grab is gone. And, um, um, and then also rest in the knowledge that God wants to speak to you. He's not going to make it so difficult. He's like, Oh, you missed it. That's the only time I'm going to say something too bad. So sad. That's not our God. So if you have, if you are having trouble with remembering your dreams or retaining the dreams, do keep in mind that there is the prince of this air, that he takes things and thoughts and he whis that are wispy and he, and he takes them and, and steals them. He's a, right. He's a stealer. He's a, he, he's a thief. And so even these precious things that God is saying, these whispers from the Lord, if it's the prince of the air, these things on the air go past us. So um, we're going to pray in a moment about, about retaining that. And some of, there's some disciplines that we can help to help us get in the place of, of better retention. Um, and then also we need to remember in our dream interpretation aims that dreams do not violate spiritual principles. They will never violate spiritual principles. They will challenge your interpretation of scripture though. Keep that in mind. Um, because we interpret scripture or we understand or have been taught scripture for so many years in, our, in context with their own culture that they'll even, we see probably you've experienced lately or is that God is challenging the way that we have looked at scripture interpretation. For example, women in, in leadership, right? For years, it was interpreted, the scripture was interpreted that women should not teach. Thank goodness I'm at home right now, so I can teach you. <laughs> Sorry, that was a reference to John McCain, um, MacArthur's comment to go home. Okay, um, so uh, what I'm what I have given you here is can you I don't you can't see this so this this handout right now is the dream principles and there is it's not filled out so there's like a whole I don't can you see this so there's a whole bunch of like elements you will want to actually create your own dictionary with this so we're gonna go this is. I'm going to unmute you. You can, or yeah, I'm going to, un, actually, I'm going to let you unmute, unmute yourself. So, uh, so think about, you have to, you have to with, so remember the perception. So there's, so most elements have, um, more than one meaning and I'll, sh I will reference some books, give you some books, but I want you to start to think yourself. The Holy Spirit is such a great teacher. And the one problem with relying on a biblical dream dictionary is that we rely on it too much like a formula. And we, and then we don't, and we get bogged down in the details of the dream that we miss the actual interpretation or we actually miss what God is saying about, I don't know about you, but God doesn't use often use a lot of words when he when to get his message across. He's pretty, he's pretty succinct with his words when he's talking to me directly. And so, and it's not confusing. It's clear when he, when he gives me a direct message, it's clear. And so, um, I find like, so this is part of like understanding your own interpretation or your, and your own dream language is very, very helpful because this is between you and you and God, like you, you will go further with this than, than, and hearing what God is saying about each of these terms, then even if you go with something else, um, a biblical dream dictionary, this takes practice, this takes discipline, and this takes maturity. This takes in intimacy. But okay, so 
Earth elements, wind. What does wind represent, do you think, in a dream? Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Change. Um, uh, things that are not concrete. Um, think about, um, those are some. Uh, water, also Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Cleansing. Some, cleansing, yep. yeah. On, on the negative side, it's a tie, it's uh, in over our heads. It depends, like, are you in the water, under the water, on the water? Like, so these are some, all of that will change what the, how, how this dream, how this, that element in the dream is, is interpreted, whether if you're immersed, if you're on top of it, if you're afraid, um, sword, what's a sword? Battle. Battle, in a battle, could be the word of God. Mm -hmm. Word of God. Could be um, cutting of something off. Mm -hmm. A sword represents authority as well. Um, vehicles. <gasps> Ministry. Yeah. Your life. Life. Min vehicles are often ministry for yeah. sure. It's also a transition. It's from getting from one place to another. Um, so thinking about that, I'm not, I'm not going to take any further with this because we could... I want to do a demonstration and we've got some other stuff that I want to show you. So the other thing that you need is asking questions. Okay. The better you at, the better you get at asking questions, the better your dream interpretation will become. You're asking questions to the Lord, right? To the Holy spirit. But, um, of these dreams, but if you are interpreting for yourself, you're asking these, these questions. So questions to ask, like, who is the focus of the dream? Is it the dreamer or it, does it, so who is, who, what is the action of the dream around? Is it, is it the dreamer? Usually the dreamer. And especially if you're just getting into dream interpretation or you are not in a place of leadership, um, leaders, leaders will sometimes, uh, will typically more have more intercession dreams and have information about other people. Their dreams would include information about other people, but 95% of the dreams that, that are dreamt are about the, the dreamer itself. So, um, and the, and you'll know who that is, is like who's driving the traffic mm. or the activity is the activity around you. Even if you're an observer, and and nobody else seems to be the focus then you become then the dreamer is about you this is um uh, is there a sub focus uh what other little things are going on not um what happened in the dream where did it happen the setting which era was it past present or future so something typically if it's in the if if you see your your present self but it's you know that you know that it's in the future it the dream might be something about that's coming or if you are in your present self and you are in your childhood home, for example, it might be something that God wants to deal with that happened as a child that is still affecting you to this day. So you kind of have to look, are, if you're the focus of the dream or who's the focus of the dream, what age are you? Are you your present age, future age, or past age? Is the setting like present, future, or past, like all of these things combined kind of show, is this making sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, emotions. What emotions did the dream evoke in you? Um, what emotions did you have when you woke up from the dream? Like you can have a really terrible dream and, and, uh, but feel at peace when you woke up. So then you can maybe understand maybe that was a, the Lord was showing you an attack that was happening, but, but the peace comes from the Lord. Um, there was, I'll give you an example of a dream that I thought was for sure of the enemy. That was not. Um, I had dreamt of, it was a, it was a, a I was, in, I was, it was a sexual encounter that I was having and it was, it was bondage <clears throat> and I enjoyed it in the dream. I, that there was a, a bondage situation of, of sexual intimacy and I woke up and I just 
started um, cleansing myself, all sorts of cleansing prayers. I'm like, that's not, there was, I, there was, I'm not a sexual deviant. There was nothing in it that, but it made me feel like, Ooh, what was this dream about? I didn't want to tell anybody about this dream. I, it bothered me for weeks, three weeks that I was so bothered because I was so disturbed in my spirit about this, this dream that I'd had. And, and I was, yeah, rebuking and, and binding the enemy over this dream. And then finally the Lord said to me <coughs> three years or three months, three weeks later, he says, you think that that there's that there's bondage on love, but there isn't. And as much as you <coughs> are, I liked the bondage. I wanted some of the law, like I liked the rules, the restitution, the punishment, that the the. But God's love is not like that. The intimacy with Him is not like that, and and is as horrible as I felt about uh, and disgust about, about that dream, the Lord said to me, that's how I feel about the law. You're under in love. Like you are under a love covenant with me. We're in love and we are not in law. And, but I wanted law. There was a part of me that wanted law. And so, man, that was for me, that was a, it was a very strong message that that um the lord let me anguish with for weeks before he revealed that um colors are they uh, are they is the dreaming cover color is it vivid color or muted color now i want to just i don't actually dream in color usually I, or i don't notice that i'm dreaming in color or not in color so if the dream is not in color or i can't say that it's in color that doesn't mean that it's not from the lord so i want to just let you know that if if you're not noticing vivid colors that it must not be from the Lord. It, what, what is, what is common to note is, is what was notable of color in the, in the, in the dream. So there might be something like a red truck kept, I kept seeing a red truck mm -hmm. in my dream or the truck was red. And, and that was a detail that seemed to stick out. So you might want to record that detail, but a truck um, without a color, or you didn't notice the color, no big deal. Um, or it may not be a big deal. What am, so emotions, uh, are the people known in other people in the dream? Are they known to the dreamer? If so, how, how does the person connect to the dreamer in real life? How does the dreamer feel about the person? Is it a faceless person? So, does per so faceless people, if you actually can't identify or see the face, often that is angelic beings in the dream, represented by angelic beings. Uh, and then miscellaneous, are there strong details that stick out? What seems to be out of place? Is it a repeated dream? Is it a cluster dream, several dreams at one time? And then you compare and contrast why this, why, why was it a, why was it a motorcycle as opposed to a bicycle? Why was it a four door car as opposed to a truck? Why was it, uh, right? These are the, some of the questions. Why, why was I with my daughter and not my son? These are, these are kind of this and that, why this and that. Okay. So do you want to do, <laughs> I feel like we have gone through, it's like, I'm so sorry. Record this. Uh, this will be recorded. Um, what I have also given you, and we're going to do, a, we're going to do a dream map. So here's a dream map. I have another, I'll share it with you in just a second. Um, so you have these notes, it's dream principles. So um, it's, it's an area for you to figure, start filling out your own dream interpretation dictionary uh, numbers and I also want to say names the people's names I just want to share share uh, an example of a, of names being important I uh, look up so there's apps on your phone or look up on name name meanings.com uh, I had a dream of of a, of a guy named Aiden was in my dream and I won't go into the whole dream because I don't have time, but I looked up, there's no Aiden. I didn't know the Aiden, um, but I looked up Aiden and the Aiden is fiery one. And it makes sense that that was a Holy, that was Holy spirit was in the dream. Um, he, he was represented. And so is my interaction with Holy spirit in that dream. So I had to look up the name Aiden to find that out. Um, another dream that I had, this is early on in my dream language that I was in, 
Bellingham, which is in in the board um, across, down in the states in Washington, not very far. I go to Bellingham a lot, and I had taken a bus to Penticton, which is a city a little bit further away in Canada, and the it was starting it was getting dusk and it was starting to rain and i was concerned about the puddles that i could still hop over the puddles when i went into this i was going to a school i could hop over the puddles when i went into the school but i couldn't i thought to myself in the dream that when i'm finished the school the puddles will be too big i'll be completely immersed i won't be able to uh, avoid getting wet at that point and i thought I'll just let the Lord deal with it. He'll make it okay. That was my thought. So then I woke up at, and the dream, I understood this, I was, this was the beginning of my prophetic, um, moving into the prophetic stream and understanding this, that I was still worried. I was apprehensive, but I was moving into a ministry, a big ministry that was going to be in the prophetic. Um, but the, the two specific um, towns that that were in my dream i took a look at what they looked up online and and bellingham the nickname or the the tagline for for bellingham the, un, the unofficial tagline of Be bellingham is the city of subdued excitement um which i i was not a manifester i was very very stoic like i was very conservative in my approach and my demonstration of worship at that time so the city of subdued excitement and penticton is the place to dwell forever so he was moving me from taking me from this conservative um experience into this place where it, it actually helped me understand these manifestations that started to happen with me when i was in the spirit and so that was quite interesting so names are very important okay so uh, you'll have that. So you have in your handout the, the dream mapping, which we're going to do right now. And you have biblical numbers, numerology, and then you have the prophetic meanings of color, which is, I think, this in even any dream interpretation or dictionary book, this is the one that the fire catchers have for our, dream, our dreams. Um, this is the most in-depth. I've spent a lot of time with color in the Lord. Um, this is the most in-depth that I have that is probably available i think for you it's a great resource okay so let's move into um share i'm gonna move here okay so here's the the, the dream mapping okay you have it so here is the, the what we have is the focus the and in, in here, you can't see, sorry, what I'm doing. Right here, so here's the focus is gonna be here. Here's gonna be the sub-focuses, and then these are details. So each dream has one focus. It may have as many as three or four sub-focuses. It doesn't necessarily have to. And then you wanna maybe write a couple of more details that stand out. So I'm gonna read a dream that I had. This is a few, this is several years ago. This is about eight years ago, nine years ago. And then we're going to do an interpretation. We're going to drop, we're going to sh show you the interpretation of the dream through the dream mapping using this um, and how we, and how this is a, a good tool for you. Okay. So here's the dream. I was driving home. Uh, uh, sorry. I was driving to school in a motor home, which was also pulling behind a small car. The motor home developed engine trouble. So I left the motor home by the side of the road. I was going to unhook the small car, but as I moved toward it, it burst into flames. I thought it was best for me to continue to school where I was going to make a police report. Okay, so that's the dream. Now, you can, feel free to unmute yourself and ask me, this is where you need to um, start practicing asking questions of the dreamer. I'm right here, so you can, you can ask me questions. Um, so we're gonna just, we're gonna start to write down this down. So who is the focus of the dream? You can um, you can you, you can the dreamer. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, what's 
so me, I, so the dreamer is the focus, me. Um, what is a, what's a sub, what's a sub focus? Uh, the car. The I'd car? Have, I'd have to see it. Okay. That's how my brain works. <laughs> Uh, let me read it again. I was driving to school in a motorhome, which was also pulling behind a small car. The motorhome developed engine mm -hmm. trouble, so I left the motorhome by the side of the road. I was going to unhook the small car, but as I moved toward it, it burst into flames. I thought it was best for me to continue to school where I was going to make a police report. Yeah. You, have, you have the motorhome. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else? Uh, maybe school? the, oh, go ahead. <laughs> the school? Yeah, school. Okay, uh, anything else, do you think? Police report? Maybe. What the car bursting into flames. That's a, de that's a detail about the motorhome. Okay. Or the car, right? Because that's <laughs> now, it's talking, that, that, yeah, so that, that's a detail. Yeah. And, and the, the, so going back to the police report could, could be, I ask me, feel free to ask me questions. Like how is, what happened to the motorhome? What's the detail about the motorhome? Quit running, wasn't it? Yeah. Uh, engine trouble. and left behind, right? Um, and the car was attached, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, anything else? Like, you wanna ask me questions? Your inter interpretation is gonna it, it, um, improve and get, um, get better the more times you can, or the, more, the better the questions. So where were you going? Just, I was going to school. Yeah, but like a why you were going to school? It doesn't say. I, the dream didn't, didn't um, it didn't say. Um, maybe what were your emotions in the dream? Um, I was, I was uh, was going from like I'm going to do this. Oh, that that didn't work. I'm going to do this now. That didn't work. Oh well, I'm just might as well go to school. Yeah. So you weren't like super freaked out that your car burst into flames. <laughs> no. No. <laughs> Seems or the, <laughs> or the, the motorhome. The motorhome. The quit quit running. Right at engine trouble. So what did you actually drive to the school? Uh, it didn't, I didn't actually get to the school. So the dream ended after, after I was like, well, I'll just make, I'll just make a report as a police report at this, at the school. How did you make the police report at the school? I didn't, didn't actually it? make the police report. It was just my intention of what I was going to do. So okay. it didn't actually get done. Was there anybody in the motorhome with you? No, I was by myself. I mean, the motorhome is so big, it seems like it represents a group of people. Could be, or think about, so as, so think that like vehicles are our ministry. So these are ministry related. I'll give you the hint there. Yeah. These are both ministry related. So what do you think a home, a motorhome um, would represent in terms of ministry? Mobile, mobile, mobile ministry. Mm -hmm. Maybe a in in home ministry. Yeah, or home base. Mm -hmm. Right, like it's it's a place that that you could live, you could stay there for a long time. Yeah. And the car attached to the mobile home. That's kind of like um, kind of like your the way you travel away from outside of that like it's 
like I thought of a getaway car kind of even though that's not you know what I mean yeah. <laughs> like it's a traveling outside of your motor home mm -hmm. but if you think it like you're right so but it's attached so it's a it's a secondary or a subsidiary ministry of the main ministry yeah okay so um okay for sake of time i'm going to just i'm going to <laughs> fill in the gaps for you so at this time it was actually i was going to school i was still i was going to supernatural school and i was contemplating i was in ministry i was in women's ministry at my church and i was I, that kind of had come to a, a, a halt. <laughs> it, and so that was like my, my main ministry, my home ministry, my home base ministry. And attached to that, I thought, well, I'm not going to do that. I was actually also thinking of, there was this, someone from Max, uh, another parent, uh, some parents from Max's class, my son's class, other moms um, were, were having questions of faith. And I thought, well, maybe I'll do a Bible study in my home with them. And uh, I, after this dream, I thought, nope, the Lord does not want me to do that. <laughs> He's just taking care of that little thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, and so I was like, Oh, these things are gone. I'm just going to go to school. Um, the police report would represent like being that it was a, like the law being like Holy spirit law. I was, I was going to, I was going to, um, um, I've lost my word appeal to the law. I was going to appeal to, and again, the, I was coming from a very conservative background. Um, relationship was legal with mm -hmm. the Lord. It was, a, it was a legal relationship, not an intimate relationship. So mm -hmm. I could report things, but I wouldn't share things. Right. Mm -hmm. So that's, so that's how you, how you, that's, it was such a quick little, sh um, teaching, but this is how you would use this map, um, dream mapping. I know, Carriana, do you do some, use something like this? Um, I went through like a, a, a dream school thing that a lady did and she kind of had her own method to kind of comb through the dreams so she didn't miss anything. And so I, I would use that sometimes. And it was like, like a series of questions and then like, um, yeah, so this, I haven't used this specifically, but I can see how this would help because it is like laying stuff out as you're thinking about it and coming back to it is very helpful. And deciding, like our dreams can be so detailed. Um, also, I forgot, sorry, one of the things is, is title your dream find it get a title for like make a title for your dream that will give you a lot of insight so it'll break it down to um just the basics there's we can get it's easy and um every new dream interpreter will get bogged down in the details and um and so if you go through this detail means that that detail means this you are so lost you have to do a bird's eye view pulling back. What does this dream mean? And I mean, the details might be, might have significance later, but they're not, they're not going to, they're going to um, add to the main interpretation, but they are not going to be the clue for the interpretation. Does that make sense? Yeah. That you pull it back when you think you, you think you have like a, you want a bird's eye view. You don't want, forest floor view you want a bird's eye view think if you were in the helicopter what would that look like what would your dream look like what are if you only had a few words to describe your dream how would you describe it um, so, that tells you a lot because it boils down just just the most important stuff so what did you name this one did you have a name for title for this one yeah, I didn't have a title. I forgot. Um, <laughs> I, I, I did actually have originally, I did have an original title. I pulled this um, from, so I would, I would say, um, uh, um, like basically driver abandons uh, motorhome and has, um, 
and all transportation options are gone. <laughs> right, so because the, the question I had for, to the Lord at the time was, do I continue with these ministries? Do I do these things? Nope. It was mm. a very, it was a very clear no. Yeah. You broke down. Yeah. One burst in the plane. Yeah. So um, we we lost we lost everyone. I'm gonna pray for you and just actually we don't have time to do anything else. I'm so sorry. Thank you for for help for being willing to be with me for nearly two hours. I really appreciate it. I hope that that gave you some uh, a micro understanding of dream interpretation. There's so much more and uh, in depth to do. But um, yeah, any uh, final questions about about this? No. Perfect. It was clear as mud. I, I uh, clear as mud. Yeah. <laughs> clear as mud. I know that it was very, very fast, and I probably, in my speed, left things out. But um, it's it was this was mostly just to give you a biblical kind of present biblical information, and then further investigate it on your own. So, Father, I thank you for the participants who joined us today. Uh, for an interest in hearing what you have to say. You have so much to say, Father. You have so much um, knowledge that you want to give to us, um, healing that you can give to us in dreams. Um, and for anyone who, has, who wants to dream more, we just impart um, more dream language, greater dreams, an understanding and ability to practice what they, interpreting what they've dreamed. So increase their dreams, Lord. Increase their uh, the focus. Uh, we ask that you would protect their dreams um, from being stolen from the enemy. That they would develop disciplines. These might be disciplines that they would be help find helpful. But the enemy would not be able to steal these. Uh, that they are precious words of the Lord, and that each person here and listening wants to hear your voice. They want to know what you're saying because, um, because they are in intimate relationship with you. So we increase what you what knowledge that you've imparted today, expand on it, Holy Spirit, let it be, become a place of interest to learn more, know more, and hear more from you that they would seek it out. And I thank you so much that you are faithful to teach us. You are so faithful to teach us and you bring in teachers, you bring in resources for us. So we um, bless the rest of the day with you in it. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. You're welcome. So I'm going to stop share and stop recording.